Hello, and you're listening to WITZ, The Wits, the one place for all things music, art, and entertainment right here in Douglas County, Oregon. I'm your host, Mr. Colin Hurwitz, and thank you for joining us today. This episode is brought to you by 10 Down Bowling, Split Spar and Grill, and a new company, Top It Express. Try them today. Of course, check out Edward Jones for your investing needs, New Visions Eye Care for your spectacle needs, and Wix Emmett for your investing needs. A lot of great companies right here in Douglas County, Oregon. And of course, the Gene Bechtel School for Music, Spider King Studios, and the Douglas County Music Association. Thank you so much for being great sponsors. And we're also happy to have your help as well. Let me tell you a little bit about where your money goes. We have three primary missions. One is to create opportunities for performance for Douglas County musicians and anybody who's visiting. Two is to provide scholarships and sponsorships to academics and young professionals. And of course, three is to provide instruments, lessons, and studio space to students in need. And here's the different tier memberships of our program. $300 will make you part of our bronze tier membership. That helps us with instruments and lessons. $500 will make you part of our silver tier, and that helps us get scholarships and sponsorships to students. And $1,000 puts you in the gold tier. That allows us to pay for venues and large performance avenues for our performers. If you're ready to donate today, please go to Venmo at Oregon DCMA. And if that doesn't work for you, you can also write a check or bring cash to the Gene Bechtel School for Music addressed to the Douglas County Music Association, or DCMA. And now it's time for some reviews. Welcome back to a great show. We're here to talk about a lot of cool stuff, and I have a few reviews to talk about today. The first review I'm really interested in discussing with you the most is the Douglas County Youth Orchestra. Now, you probably are aware that there are several youth orchestras in town. I believe there's only two. There may be some other smaller ones that I'm not privy to. But right now, I'm aware of the Umpqua Valley Symphony Orchestra, the Youth Symphony, and the Douglas County Youth Symphony. Uh, Kristen Parks uh, is the one who runs the one at the Umpqua. And uh, my good friend, Taylor Seiling, who's been on the show before. And now she has recently been promoted to the director of the Douglas County Youth Symphony. I went to their concert a couple of weeks ago and I really had a good time being there. Uh, I was actually invited to play percussion with the group, and let me tell you a little bit about the Youth Symphony. Now, they rehearse at the Phoenix School, and I'd never been there before, so when I was going there for rehearsal, I, was, I actually had pulled over to two different venues and knocked on a door and said, is this the Phoenix School? And they said, no, it's, it's down the way. So I felt a little silly. It was also dark and I couldn't see well. Excuses, excuses, I know. But I did go and I rehearsed with them for one performance, and I kind of had a multi-percussion setup, but I got to play with their top tier group and I was really impressed with them actually. A lot of high school kids, a few adults, mostly for teaching purposes, but I really enjoyed rehearsing and playing with the Douglas County Youth Symphony. Taylor is a great director, good conductor, good rapport with the musicians, and the sound was really, really quite good. Their concert was last Tuesday. Today's the 31st, so their concert was last Tuesday. And it's funny because I hadn't dressed in concert black for quite a while. The Douglas County Youth Orchestra actually had four ensembles play. I don't remember exactly what their names were. It was kind of like, you know, red ensemble, blue ensemble, kind of kind of just piecing them up from the very youngest to the very oldest and most experienced. But man, what a great show. The whole house was full. At least 300 people were there. It had to have been. And all the musicians dressed to the nines, looking good, nice white shirts, black slacks, dress shoes, and then me and my little percussion set up in the back. But if you haven't had a chance to listen to the Douglas County Youth Orchestra under the new direction, I really encourage for you to check out their new program. Now, off the record, and I probably shouldn't say this, but I'm going to anyway. Um, I find it difficult to appreciate that both symphonies have their concerts at the same time in two completely different locations. So it's almost like the situation is you have to pick which one you're going to go to or which one you'll participate in. It was kind of frustrating actually because it would have been nice to go to the Umpqua Valley Youth Symphony and hear their stuff and then go to the Douglas County Youth Symphony and hear their stuff. That would have been fantastic. But unfortunately that doesn't seem to way that it works. Both concerts happen the same day at the same time, 7 p.m. So, and a lot of my students at Hughcrest, my elementary school that I teach at, uh, they are mostly in the Umpqua Valley one. I actually only know like one or two students in the, in the Douglas County one. So a lot of my students brought me tickets and they told me about their show and I, I had to tell them I couldn't go. I had to go play with the other symphonies. So I hope this gets figured out soon. It doesn't seem very fair that both symphonies have their shows at the same time. I don't know what the solution is, 
Maybe one symphony could have their concert two days later or two days earlier, or maybe not have the exact same schedule at the exact same time. Uh, you know, I don't know what the solution is, but just kind of putting it out there, it seems frustrating that for the two youth symphonies in town, you're basically having to pick one of two and you can't enjoy both or you can't be a part of both. You can't even go experience both. So I hope that gets figured out. But Taylor Siling, you did a great job. Way to conduct those kids. Those kids look, really look up to you and I can tell. Um, you have the respect of that crowd. And so congratulations on your performance. And I had a great time performing too. I didn't do a whole lot. I played a drum, a gong, and a suspended cymbal and tambourine for a Nutcracker excerpt. So super cool stuff. Thank you so much, Miss Siling. The last thing I wanna review with you is we finally got our check for this grant for our foster kids and I'm so excited to put that to use. We basically have a few members of the Jean Bechtel School who will go and teach at this foster care home and that's really awesome and so we're gonna use this grant money to help pay those musicians to go and teach. It's very, very exciting that we have this grant and it finally showed up. Uh, 2,500 bucks, it's the most amount of money we've received so far. So thank you to Interstate Bank, thank you to Alicia for setting it all up. And again, this is a great opportunity. You probably don't know this because I haven't told you yet, but supposedly there's supposed to be this big article in the paper coming out soon, uh, which I have heard that the news review has been hacked, which is really, really bad. And um, keep keep them in your thoughts. News review, got a got a pull them up from their bootstraps, as they say. And I really hope they get that all figured out because this big news story, we'd really like our first news story of the DCMA that hit the papers to be something like this, where our nonprofit is not only accomplishing our mission statement, but to the extent where we really are helping students in need. Foster home kids. We all know that kids in foster homes need a little extra help. I couldn't imagine it's that fun to be in that situation. So uh, thank you for Alicia and for Interstate Bank for providing this grant. And we're really excited to get started. In fact, I think we have a teacher that's already been out there helping and mostly guitar and voice, but we would like to expand that someday to drums, trumpet, um, other types of wind instruments, but we'll see what happens. And so that's all we have for this week's reviews. Hey, check this out. We have some great videos from some great friends of mine. Gavin's got another hunting and fishing video, so let's check that out. Well, hello again. Welcome back to another episode. Today, we're at a very interesting place. We're at Cooper Creek Reservoir, and I've got my drift boat. Here we are out on the lake. We are at a place called Cooper Creek Reservoir. It is a small lake just outside of Sutherland by about five to 10 minutes. And this is one of my favorite places to go when you've got nothing else to do. And today is one of those days since the river has still, since I last saw you over three weeks ago, still is unfishable and not safe for boating. As you can tell, the lake isn't its normal blue-green color uh, due to the rain. It is a very muddy brown chocolate milk. That doesn't mean you still can't catch fish. So today, guys, I want to talk about two different techniques that you can use either on a boat like I am or on the bank. The first thing I want to start out with is trolling, and this is something that you can do in a boat. Now, trolling is all about covering water. So if you want to cover as much water as you can, then trolling is gonna be the way to do it. And here's how I do it. I start out by having a nine foot rod. That's what I use, I use a nine foot rod. It has 12 pound monofilament. You can use monofilament or you can use braid. And here's how trolling works. You move your boat at a slow speed while dragging behind it your gear. Now let's talk about what gear I'm using. So starting off at the top of our setup, coming down from our, I have a snap swivel on a plastic tube that slides on the line. I have a rubber snubber, which absorbs some of the shock from the bite. I have my flasher. And at the very end, I have my lure. Now, this is a Max Lure Smile Blade, and it moves through the water and creates a flash and vibration that fish absolutely love. And I have it tipped with a pink trout worm. What I'm going to do first, before I put my line in the water, is I need to take my snap swivel that's on my plastic tube. I need to attach my two ounces of weight. You can use as much weight or as little weight as you want. This lake is very deep. The spot that I'm hovering over, I would say probably 
is anywhere from 60 to 70 feet. I'm very primitive today. I don't have a fish finder in my drift boat. So I'm kind of just having to go off of my previous knowledge of this lake. So here's what the setup looks like in total. Two ounce cannonball on the sliding snap swivel, followed by the rubber snubber to absorb the shock of the bite, keep my hook set firm. I have my flasher, which is a sling blade, followed by my smile blade. Let's put it in the water and see what happens. And we're gonna drop this down and we're gonna see what happens. So we've been trolling for a while now, haven't seen much action. I'm not surprised, this water's really murky and you really have to work for them in this lake when it's murky like this. There should be lots of holdover trout from previous releases from the hatchery. So we're just gonna keep trolling and we'll see if anything bites. up and we're going to try something a little bit different. So the next technique I'm going to present is called cast and retreat. And the name says it all. You cast, out, and then you retreat. Pretty straightforward. Here's my setup for this one. I have a much smaller five foot rod compared to my nine foot rod previously. That has braided line on it with an eight pound monofilament top shot on it. I don't have much, just enough to conceal it when it's moving through the water. And my lure of choice is a rooster tail. Notice how bright the coloration is. That's because in this very dark, muddy water, bright colors are going to stick out the most and get your lure the most attention. I take some time here, we're gonna make some casts. I really like using cast and retrieve when I have located a pot of fish from either catching them on the troll or even just seeing them jump. For those of you who don't know what a rooster tail is, it is a small lure that has a rotating flashing blade. All right, this little blade flashes and turns and it actually creates vibrations in the water that attract fish. So another thing that I wanted to talk to you just briefly about here at Cooper Creek is that there's actually a hiking trail that goes all the way across the lake. Yes, you see those people over there? They walked probably over a mile or two to get to this side. And you can actually hike all the way around the lake. So you start at the western boat ramp, walk all the way over across the lake and you end back up at the west side boat ramp. So really, really cool, unique opportunity here. I mean, it's just an absolutely gorgeous place. So we're gonna get back to making some casts here. We're gonna try our cast and retrieve method and we're gonna see if we can get something on it. I'll have you here for a second and while we're waiting for our uh, fish to bite here i wanted so if you the viewer have something you would like me to go do or you have a recommendation or suggestion for a place or activity uh, feel free to reach out to make that happen i would love to start taking recommendations and suggestions on places to go and things to do here in the county so please feel free to reach out well sucks we didn't catch anything today but that's just how it goes that's why they call it fishing not catching we had a lot of adverse conditions against us today and we made the most of it. So thank you again for tuning in. I really appreciate all of your viewership and your support. Like I said before, if you've got someplace you want me to go check out, please leave a suggestion 
and I will see you in the next episode. Bye, everyone. And a new video by a new member of the program, Dr. Michael Wheeler, is going to talk about the instrument of the day. Michael, take it over. Hello to everybody in the wits world. Um, I am Michael Wheeler, and this is a new segment that we're doing. Uh, this is the instrument of the week. This is Dilruba, uh, which is an Indian instrument that hails from the northwest of India in the Punjab region. It has a strong association to the Sikh religion. Um, it is a Oh, normally between 17 and 21 string instrument, um, but normally we only use one string out of all of those, uh, those other strings. The rest of the strings are either droning strings or to enhance the sound uh, by way of sympathetic resonance. It's got a goatskin face. And it's, uh, this one is a more modern instrument. It uses guitar style machine heads. Uh, the sound is kind of a nasally, um, you can think of it like a cello or a vi nasally cello or violin sound. The, uh, the instrument itself, um, obviously you just saw is played with a bow. This is a German style double bass bow, but the traditional bow resembles this style of bow, uh, very much. So a lot of players just opt for the European style bow. Um, there are a couple of related instruments to this in the east of India, in Bengal and Bangladesh. This is called Esraj. Esraj is a little bit different. It has a little bit of a different body. Um, and there's also an instrument also associated with the Sikh religion called Taus. And Taus in Persian means peacock, and it resembles a peacock on the, uh, the head of the instrument. A lot of times there's a carved peacock up here. And on the body of the instrument, there's a uh, often a wooden peacock that jets out. And sometimes uh, players, when they want to look really fancy, will put peacock feathers in the back of it. Um, and that's basically it. This is one of the instruments that we teach at Gene Bechtel School for Music. So if you're curious about uh, this instrument, Dilruba in particular, or if you're interested in other styles of Indian music, um, please give us a visit. So I'll play you out. And now for some news that is happening. This is all from the Facebook page. If you want to hear or see what's going on in the Roseburg area or just outside of Roseburg, go to our Facebook page and search the Douglas County Music Association. Join and subscribe. I want to thank all 634 people that have signed up on our Facebook page. You are the best people in the universe. And if anybody disagrees with me, well, that I guess that's like your opinion, man. Uh, but I, <laughs> I'm just letting you know that I appreciate all 634 of you. Thank you for being a part of our amazing network and I'm really grateful for you. Uh, Killer Roommates, Spider King's new movie, Killer Roommates first trailer has dropped, as they say. So you wanna go check that out. That's also on the Facebook page, but you can also go to Spider King Studios Facebook page and watch that trailer. You won't wanna miss this exciting new comedy about some roommates who've been murdered, or have they? I guess you'll just have to see the trailer Watch the movie and find out. I think the movie's gonna be coming out later uh, in April, so stay tuned for that. More trailers on the way, and I'm really excited for Killer Roommate, this great new movie made by Douglas County's finest filmmakers. Nicely done, you guys. I wanna to talk to you about a concert that's actually coming up this Saturday. Switch my panel over here. Now, this is an exciting thing. This is called the Lunar New Year concert. And for those of you who don't know, the Lunar New Year is the Chinese New Year. So our New Year is January 1st. The Lunar New Year seems to be in the middle of February. Uh, this concert is on this Saturday, February 3rd. Uh, when this goes out, it'll probably be one or two days before then. But let me tell you what it says here. 
ah, it's free admission, and it's a lot of Asian and Chinese music. We're talking about Gu Cheng, we're talking about Erhu, and we're talking about violins and pianos and all kinds of cool stuff. So come check out the Lunar New Year concert 2024. That's this Saturday at 3 p.m. February 3rd. And the location, this is the New Roseburg Church on 2075 Northwest Witherspoon. That's in the Hughcrest area. Uh, that is the New Roseburg Church. And if you don't know where that is, just hit up Google Maps and check it out. It's where the Hughcrest Church of God used to be. So if you're not sure where that is, go to the Hughcrest area. It's the church that's high up on the hill from what I've heard. So you really want to check out this great Asian concert with great Asian music this Saturday, February 3rd at 3 p.m. And it's free. You want to go check this out. Look forward to seeing you there. And our last little bit here, if I go to my other page, the RHS band, the Roseburg High School band, is having a fundraiser, a pancake breakfast. I'll read this to you. Please spread the word. RHS band's pancake fundraiser is coming also this Saturday from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. Stop by Roseburg Applebee's. So that's Applebee's. You know, I know we all love Casey's. I like to go into Casey's. But this fundraiser is actually being held at Applebee's. So this Saturday, before you come to the Lunar Show, go get some pancakes at Applebee's and support the Roseburg High School's band. 10 bucks gets you all the pancakes you can eat. Now, to be honest, I can have about one pancake until I'm about done. So I'm not a great pancake chief. You know, if you love pancakes and you love supporting music, check out Applebee's this Saturday morning. Go get some pancakes, stuff yourself, go sit by the lake for a while and rest, and then go check out the Lunar Concert. And it's gonna be a fantastic time. And that's all for current events. Thanks, everybody. And for the first time, I'm actually gonna tell you who's coming up next on the program because you probably don't know, but last year I was kind of winging it, just getting people and getting them in here. And we were doing a show every single week, so I wasn't trying to advertise for the next guest. I wanted it to be a surprise. But guess what? Next guest on the show, which will be in a couple weeks from now, we got widespread haze. Why do I say it like that? Well, I guess I just kind of have to at this point. So we're excited to have all of them on the show. That'll be the next episode, but stick around because we got Frank McCracken coming up next. And now our feature presentation.
Well, that seems to be all the time we have left for today. Tune in next week for another great episode of the WITZ, The Wits, brought to you by the Douglas County Music Association and so many other great sponsors. Again, if you're willing to donate now, you can send a check to 1622 Northeast Vine Street at Roseburg, Oregon, 97470, or you can go to our Venmo at Oregon DCMA. We can't wait to hear from you. That's all the time we have. Until next time, bye everyone. Thank you.